It's before 7 a.m. and I'm in a car with a bunch of strangers and there is a driver. Who are you? Hi there, I'm Mark and I'm with the group Dogs and Cats of the Dominican Republic. That and sounds good. How did I get here? Uh, we snuck by and took you off the street and uh, forced you to be a volunteer with us. And so today we're heading out to our animal sanctuary called Coconut Hound Haven. Oh my god, is that like Wonderland? It is, it is. There's a lot of puppies out there, there's a lot of happy dogs, and the main thing we're heading out for today though is to do a spay-neuter clinic. So we have a veterinarian coming out, and we're going to uh, fix 25 animals, and maybe treat a few others for a few uh, injuries possibly, and we've got a lot of great volunteers coming today with us. That might be them. Who are you guys? Hey, hey. hi. I'm Sandra from Holland. I'm Mike from Holland. I'm Alia from Canada. We love it here. And about uh, eight or nine years ago, we met Tanya and Tom Webber for the first time when we were on the island. And we saw how they love the animals and how much they did for them. And we admire the work DCDR is doing uh, enormously. And wherever we want to, ha we can help, we will help. Um, and we are. are very, very excited that we have the opportunity to join uh, DCDR today and help as a volunteer at, uh, at the clinic in Le Perron today. She's a specialist in de-ticking. Yes. Yeah, de-ticking. <laughs> yeah, de I'm, I'm, I'm a de-ticking addict, That's as a matter of fact. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I am um, a regular volunteer here. I come back and forth between the Dominican Republic and Canada quite often. Um, I'm a pretty regular volunteer at DCDR. I help out at any clinic that I can. I've helped them out with World Vets with transporting animals, and I've done a few spay and neuter clinics. I like to help out in the recovery section, so I get to cuddle all the cute animals while they wake <laughs> up. <laughs> so the dogs just live naturally on the beach here. A lot of the restaurants will give them food, and we try and come in and do spay neuter clinics to make sure there aren't too many dogs and they start becoming annoying. And so it's quite a project, but we get over here two to three times a year to do clinics. Move it. <laughs> There's a kitty. Two Aww. kitties. <laughs> three kitties and a puppy. Oh my gosh. All right, we may be back for you. <laughs> so we're gonna do this video in two parts. We're gonna have one part, first part, which is safe, so we don't show anything there. And then there's a second version, a second part of the video where I'm gonna show you the actual thing, how to spay and neutering works. Welcome to Coconut Hound Haven. Once the surgeries are done, then we'll bring them out here. To clean again. So you'll go through a whole process, which I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll walk you through. Yeah. So the very first step in our spade neuter process is we gather all the information on the animals that are coming in and record that information on a sheet which follows them through the entire process. Each animal also gets a paper collar put around their neck with this information on it, so we make sure to match it up and we're working with the right dogs and the right medications. So on this sheet, we have things like their age, whether it's a male or female dog, um, whether it's a dog or cat, uh, the date, we'll put the veterinarian's name here and, and keep all this information. But the most important thing we get is the weight of the dog. Um, we use the weight to draw up the proper amount of medications for the animals and uh, the medications we give them are a long-lasting antibiotic. Also, we also give them a long-lasting pain med and one of the dr meds we also draw up uh, makes them a little uh, droopy and sleepy before they go on the bus or and then on the bus we give them gas anesthesia which puts them totally under for the surgeries. Cooler get in. 
from the car. <laughs> So this is the spreadsheet we use to determine all the medications that we're going to use in the surgery today. Uh, for example, our first dog, Lakia, is weighs 32 pounds, so we enter 32 pounds in our spreadsheet. And then we go down and, and determine if the dog is up under six months, we have certain medications. If the dog is older than six months, we have different medications. And if it happened to be a cat, then this would be the medications we use. So Lakia is a male dog, and so it's uh, over six months, so these are the medicines we're going to use. Uh, you can see we have ketamine and xylazine. Those are the two medicines that we give them to put them preliminary to sleep before we give them the gas anesthesia. Um, so these are the M milliliters of those that we're gonna give. And then we have another medicine called ketoprofen, and this is the amount we're gonna give, and that's a long-lasting pain medicine. And then we have amoxicillin, uh, and this is the amount we get, and that's a long-lasting antibiotic for the animal. She's in the bathroom. What? I use in the bathroom. Okay. Just for now, so I can move some creatures. He scares me. Come on, sweetheart. Oh, you're beautiful. What a big puppy. Yeah. Oh, no. He's a noisy one. That's why we bought it. He looks like a little, uh, maybe, husky mix, and they all yeah. scream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Say hi. Very high points, eh? <laughs> you're going to be different. Here, washing them up, then rinsing uh, with uh, just water, then uh, disinfecting, and then uh, get the disinfectant up with uh, alcohol. Dry it, and then get it back in the in the wagon. It's the circle of cutlery. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just gonna yell incoming. Incoming. I'm Kim Watson, I'm the director at Coconut Hound Haven. This is where we are now, and we're going to take a walk through and show you where all the animals are. This is our grooming room, which right now it's a little bit of a mess because we have everything everywhere because it's not exactly the way we wished it would be. There's not enough closet space. But normally we bathe, this is our bathing area. We have a shower here, grooming <laughs> main bathroom, and where we also do laundry. Normally there's an examination room with medications. We have a puppy staying in here at the moment. The kissing boy. There's um, medications in the pharmacy area. Again, everything's a mess today because of extra bodies here. It's going to be loud. It's going to be very loud. 
there are eight of these kennels. Most of the dogs are down in the recovery area because they were getting fixed. So they're not back here yet. Hi. Fiona. Fiona's quite old and she has puppies here that are down being fixed. You spilled all your food. These are the juvenile delinquents. <laughs> yeah, we have Maggie, Mariposa, Romy, uh, Rastus, Maria, Mila, Kinley, and Era. There she is. There she is. There she is. Sometimes we get small puppies. We put them in here just to keep them separate for a little while. We had puppies in here this morning waiting to get operated on. Hello. That's an area in here. <laughs> that one's not for adoption. <laughs> uh, Campbell's is. Luna is for adoption. Sophie's for adoption. These are a mixture of all different litters. Felicidad. Felicidad. And this is Katie, who all nine of her puppies have just got fixed today. Oh my god. The, the nine K ones, they all start with K. And all nine of her puppies are over in recovery because they just got spayed. Mm -hmm. Katie. Say hi. Say hi. She's a very good mama. She's taking care of all nine of them. They're all healthy. Yes, it's a girl. Come here, Katie. She smells all the other dogs. Yes, and she's available for adoption still. She's about two years old. So normally, like I said, there's gr there was grass. There's still a little bit in here and two palm trees, but the dogs ate them all. <laughs> we tried. Now we are going to put concrete actually in that side. And then we've got the swimming pool. One side is going to be the swimming pool area. The other side will be a sand, sand pit. very recently rescued. She was unfortunately given to a 90-year-old grandmother by her grandson and really could not manage to look after this poor puppy. She's been on a chain for the whole six months of her life and the daughter of the old lady reached out to my husband to say, please, this, this old lady cannot manage this dog. So she's only been here a few days. You can see she has very bad mange which is usually a, a mixture of immature uh, immune system and poor and poor nutrition. So Linda is now, we use something called Bag Bar and it's an antiseptic um, and it kind of heats up the skin as well and it's marvelous for these cases of mange. So she's only been here a few days. So she's had her worming treatment, she's had a tablet for the mange, and today she's been spayed, which will also help her mange, that, that's helped by spay and neuter as well. Now because she's a pit bull, it, it really is going to be impossible to send her to, to Canada, and of course everybody knows that in the US the, the shelters are just over full of pit bulls because of overbreeding. So we're going to make sure that she, if she goes on island that she goes to a very good home and in fact here if it's local in Luperon we continue to monitor uh, where our, where our um, fosters go to once they're adopted on island to make sure that they do get their happy ever after. tube when she came into recovery and then we wait till they start to show signs of wanting to cough. Once they give the one or two coughs, we ease the tube out. Where I live. In the Hi Kiwi. Now it's time to go to the second part of the video and we're gonna show actual cutting action. So brace for impact or leave the webpage right now. Oh, you came 
from Lifestyle. It's a little wild, so. Did you find the Lifestyle baby? Well, we're gonna neuter them. We just sedated them, waiting them to go to sleep. Um, and then we'll tube them, prep them, put them on the table, and the doctor will uh, neuter them. And then I'll wake up and get adopted. It's like, what is going on here? So this was antibiotics, and then this is pain medicine. Just doing it sub-Q while he's falling asleep. What's the tube for? Um, it's gonna go down. To secure their airway. There you go. So when they vomit, it doesn't go down. I just know it has to be done. <laughs> All right. Full of sand. Blood. <laughs> and this is just cleaning, sanitizing the area. Yeah, you could just tell them the. What's this? That is blowing up the end of the tube so it blocks the airway. So if they vomit, it doesn't go down. So now they probably only breathe through the tube. Correct. Hey, Debbie. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. We're gonna help tie the legs. Secure the legs in case they wake up during the surgery at any time, then they're not gonna be jumping. They're not off. supposed to. Yeah, they're not <laughs> supposed to. But if it does happen, then they're not flailing around. Okay, so right now there's oxygen and then a gas, so it's a mixture, and the, they're breathing this in. It's the anesthesia to keep them sleeping, and this little beeper just tells me when they breathe that it that they're actually breathing. If it stops beep, beeping, then that means they're a little too heavy sleeping, and we need to lighten it up a bit. So they don't get breath, they, like they breathe by themselves. They're breathing by themselves, but if they get too deep, they can stop breathing. But we try to monitor the level of the anesthesia so they don't go too deep and stop breathing. What do you do if they stop? Uh, we have to, we can bag them and kind of breathe for them if we have to, but we try not to do that. So there's an ambu bag and we can squeeze that can turn off the gas part and just have the oxygen. So. Well, this probably isn't how we would normally do a, a neuter. We're just going to cheat because he's little. Okay, so, so what does that mean? So, <laughs> normally um, we would cut here and pull well, and then use suture. Well, so I'm just going to literally cut no and tie it on itself. Off. So it's, it's going to be a little different because he's so little. So this is like the quick and dirty way. But this isn't normally how we do the scrotum and pop it out. And then instead of using a stitch, we actually tie it on itself. So this way we actually save a pack of suture because a pack of suture costs probably like five dollars. So we use it to tie the knot on the, the spermatic cord. And then since it's so little, all we have to do is put a tiny bit of glue and no suture. And he's done. Wow, that went quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
going down very fast. Yes, this one's taking ages. Yeah, Romeo. Come on. So Linda's just going to give little Romeo some honey. Sometimes when their blood sugar is a little bit low because of they've been starved for their operation and they're little um, and then they get a bit cool as well during, during the op. So Linda's just going to give him a little bit of honey on his gums and that will perk him up, you see. Covering, are you? Oh, this guy um, was a, a kind of Dominican owned dog but mainly lived on the street with somebody who occasionally gave food and he sustained this terrible injury. Um, so he really um, he's come here um, as a rescue because he can't go back on the street, he's actually just been neutered. But he is going to have to have the leg amputated. Oh my God. Yes, um, it's not healing. It's really, really destroyed the foot. Far too, too much to heal itself. Oh my God. And he's, uh, the vet today that's new to him has recommended that he goes and he's going to need um, an up to the shoulder amputation. So obviously that's not a dog that would do well back on the street with, with minimal care by an owner. So he'll be up for adoption. Um, once he's healed and, and stronger. So he might be in the airport run in another year. Yeah, let's hope. Let's hope somebody will, will let's hope somebody will look after this one. <laughs> Hello. To say as a man, I could barely watch this. Yeah. I feel it in my guts. <laughs> a lot of a lot of guys are always going. <laughs> Oops, I don't want that out. Get in there. 
he need to get the stitches out? Nope. They will dissolve in probably about two months inside. And they're just gone? Yeah, the body absorbs them. What's his story? Um, he was he was uh, living in a Dominican home outside. He was chained up on a chain just a few inches long, and he was emaciated. He was 41 pounds, and today, that was about two and a half weeks ago, and today he's 68 pounds. So he's put on a dramatic amount of weight. He has about 15 more pounds to go, probably, but he was just emaciated and tick infested just a few weeks ago, and now here he is fattening up and getting neutered and getting healthy. So Mama's getting spayed today. She is. No more puppies. Hi, and Kathleen. we brought the puppies here just so that they wouldn't I be can alone. Eat off Mama. And they won't be alone all day. They'll be with her. She can still nurse them even after she's fixed. Ali? I'm gonna just go get her collar. And I gotta weigh her. Here Mama. Kathleen. Oh, there's, you haven't seen them? They're all in the room. I don't know. Here. They're very It's a sleepy dog here. So we've done one. Where's your tongue? Where's your tongue? So 
we're doing a spay and neuter marathon here, are we? Yes. We have a we have an assembly line. So is that your regular job working as a vet? Yes. And you come over here once every time there's a clinic going on? This is my first time here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I did one in Belize a couple years ago. Are you volunteering as well? Yes. Yeah, so it's a spay, it's called an ovarian hysterectomy. So we actually take the ovaries and the uterus. Just cut into the abdomen. I'm going to use this little hook to fish out her uterus. <laughs> right there is her uterus. And there's her ovary. So we break a ligament so we can get it pulled out. And then we clamp it and tie suture around it so there's no internal bleeding. So that's one side done. So this is an ovary on each side, and this is the one horn of the uterus, this is the other horn. This is the major blood vessel, so that's why we have to use a lot of suture to make sure she doesn't bleed. And then, actually, if you go down further, this is actually the cervix, this white piece here. It's just like women have a cervix. And then this is all fat, so the fat can stay. Although most women would prefer not to have the fat stay, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you need to take a break. Just let us know, or you need water or coffee or anything. And then cat. Don't get her out. I got this. <laughs> That's it. Fully disconnected. Yep. Now it's disconnected. Now we have to close her up so her guts don't fall out. <laughs> you are crazy fast. <laughs> So these stitches will absorb after probably like two months. So that way we won't have to have them come back for stitch removal. Oh, okay. So we'll actually put glue on the top. Okay, okay. And then the ink is to certify that they've been spayed or neutered. So if somebody sees the ink, then they know, oh, they already had surgery. There's somebody over there. The glue. So it saves a little time, plus they're not going to come back for stitch removal. Hey Catalina, how are you doing? You're going to get your puppies back soon. Hmm? You're going to let your wake more and sleepy? Oh, good girl. So why does Kitty get to have uh, a dome or whatever it is? Uh, because it's just a little more difficult to intubate a cat. 
their throats are a little bit different, so it's harder to get the thing down, and they do fine with the little cone or the mask. So is it easier to neuter a cat than a dog? Yeah, so I tie the ovary on itself. So there's one out. You're basically making an animal knot with yes. them. So it saves time because it takes longer to tie a stitch than it does on itself. Well, is the knot going to undo itself after it heals or is it just going to no, stay there? No, it'll stay there. What I do is I take the gauze and I pull it to make it tight. So now it's tight. So you can see when I let it go, it doesn't bleed. Okay. And then we just push it back in there, along with the abdominal fat. Push that back in. No. The blood vessels are so much more tiny than what that dog was. Mm -hmm. So usually with these, I only have to put one suture instead of two. So we're back together. So with cats, I usually don't do what we call a continuous stitch. So it's more like sewing. We make a knot and then we actually keep sewing. I said, my God, how many 10 year olds get to go back and say they saw all that? So instead of tying the individual stitches, it, that saves a little bit of time. Then yes. we're going to close the skin under the, sk oh, okay. uh, under the skin, but we'll still put glue right on because we like that to help hold the, help hold the ink. There it is. Just easier for me to hold them out. Okay. And then you can see where you are. So heading home after a long day and bringing the vet mobile back to uh, close to Savoneta, Boca de Jessica. Uh, yeah, that was a big day today with I think over 30 dogs neutered, right? Yep, 30, we had 30 dogs spayed and neutered and we did one consult and had a, a dog that had an eye issue. So yeah, we helped a lot of animals today. And a kitty too. And a kitty, yeah. It was kitty. crazy seeing the vet working on, she was just, she was a machine. She was just yep. neutering, 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 spaying, spaying crazy i mean i don't know if you can see the video that well but she's just once one note was gone was done that she got the other one and she was so fast suing and everything i was highly impressed yeah she was <laughs> she was a good one
And, and I, I would be very scared to start a fight with her. <laughs> <laughs> so Debbie, what's your overall impression? How did it go? It went very well today. Um, the first day with a new vet's always a little, at first it's always a little, we're not sure of how everybody's working, but after we do one or two, animals we all get in a groove and we know what she needs and she knows how we work and so it all settles down into a nice rhythm and routine and it went really well today so we were very pleased of how fast she was and how things just went like clockwork so very good so do we have any complications today uh just one uh she was taken out a uterus of a larger dog and the, the uterus kind of ripped and the ovary kind of snapped back in so she just had to open up the incision a little bit longer so that she could get in there and look for the ovary and take it out uh, if she would have left it the dog would have still had hormones and it could have still gone into heat so it's best not to leave any of that tissue behind if it can at all help us. So that was pretty much the only uh, issue she had while in surgery. And how is the dog now? It's very good. It did fine. Um, and it'll get a few extra, a little extra antibiotics just because she had to go in and, uh, you know, be a little more invasive. But, uh, but it, was, it was doing fine by the time we, we left for the day. That's very cool. So all puppies are doing well? All the puppies are doing well. We have we've still got a few people back at the sanctuary that are hanging around and making sure the last of the ones that had the, the surgery are waking up fine. And then uh, our volunteer, Kim, she stays on the property, so she'll be checking them you know, every few hours, you know, before she goes to bed to make sure that they're all doing well and no bleeding issues. So most of the time the dogs do really well. So that was a huge thing going on today. I was very impressed, I have to say. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, one thing I have to say, once uh, they took out the nuts of that dog and pulled on it, I, I, I felt that deep inside my body. Uh, but yeah, it was a very fascinating, interesting experience. And actually, we're going to do that three more times only this week. Uh, so there's a huge machinery going on of spaying and neutering when they have clinics week. And I'm, I'm absolutely impressed, I have to say that. So um, let's call it a day and see you tomorrow again at 7 a.m. See you soon.